Hello, Starlight. Okay, we're going to get with the Sunday School lesson, um, lesson 12 for the week of November 22nd. Um, and the title of our lesson is Moses' Audacious Request. Lesson text is Exodus 33, 12 through 23. And the golden text reads, And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Exodus 33 and 20. I'm going to... Um, read the introduction and then i'm going to whisper a word of prayer and get into the lesson plans often change sometimes this is because circumstances change we change our vacation plans because of sickness in the family or a hurricane threatening the coast where we plan to stay at other times our plans change because we or others change we decide not to pursue a new business opportunity simply because we have lost interest in it or other interests have um re have replaced it and sometimes we change our plans because we have um, rethought things and determined that our original plans were unrealistic or too costly. God's plans were very different. He knows all things, including circumstances we cannot foresee. He does not need to rethink his decisions, for they are the result of perfect knowledge and his holy character. And his plan are not derailed by our failures or inconsistencies. While he, may have, while he may seem to change his mind at times because of our actions, we um, understand that this, is apparent, this apparent change is really a part of his original plan. The truth, the, this truth gives us assurance that the Lord's plan for us are sure and, and steady and moving forward. Yet, he knows that in our weakness, we sometimes, we, we sometimes need reassurances. This is also true of godly servants such as Moses. I'm going to whisper a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day, God. Thank you for letting us see a day which we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. I pray that we made the best of this day, that we brought glory to your name, and that we continue to bring glory to your name. I pray that you touch the hearts of each and every one of us that listens um, to your lesson and help us to understand what it is you have for us to hear you speak to us today, God. I pray that you touch each and every one of us that we may understand what it is that you want us to do and live by. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, we have three outlines. The first outline is God's way, Exodus 33, 12 through 14. Second outline is God's presence, that's Exodus 33, 15 through 17. And the third outline is God's glory, Exodus 33, 18 through 23. So God's way, I'm going to read the first um, three outline, the first three verses. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people, and thou hast, I'm sorry, bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom will, see, I'm sorry, will thou sin with me? Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my, found grace in my sight. Um, now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that, consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And that's the um, verses for the first outline, God's way. I'm just going to read a little bit. Um, where it talks about Moses' pleas for God's presence. Um, it is interesting to see Moses' growth as a person and as a leader in a relatively short period of time. Not long before this, uh, Moses was a reluctant leader who really did not want the responsibility of leading the, an entire multitude of pe pe uh, people out of Egypt. Now he had come, become a leader who genuinely loved the people he was leading and often interceded interceded before God, for them before God. Now, after God had purged um, the idolatry from Israel, he told Moses to gather the people and lead them to the land he had promised to give them. The problem is that, um, the problem is what God has said is that he would, he would not go with them. Um, he would not go with them. He said, if he did go, he said, he would end up destroying the people. So he had told Moses that he was not gonna he was not gonna go with them. Um I'm gonna read a little bit from the expositor um from the first couple of verses. 
Okay, Moses' request. Um, having dealt with the people's idolatry at Sinai, the Lord told Moses to take them up into the land he had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants. However, the Lord warned that because of the nation's stubborn sinfulness, he would not go up in the midst of the um he would not go up in the midst of the people, lest he destroy them. And that's what he had told Moses that he said he's not gonna go with them because if he goes with them, he would end up destroying the people. And he said, um, the people responded, but the people responded by demonstrating a repentant attitude. And as well, we shall see the Lord. And as we shall see, the Lord agreed to go up with them in response to Moses' prayer. So Moses, the leader of the people, he prayed to God. And in response to Moses' prayer, then God said that he agreed to go up with them in, in response. And we often know that our leader pray, prays for us and he intercedes on our behalf to God. And what an awesome leader we have. And um, because a lot of times, because of our leader, God um, will grant the re request of the leader, you know, because he knows knows our leader's heart. He knows that our pastor has a shepherd's heart, a leader's heart. And so with um, the prayers of our pastor, the leader we have, we know that um, God grants, you know, his request because he knows the heart of of our leader just like he knew the heart of moses the people's leader um exodus 33 7 through 11 describes the tabernacle or tent meeting moses set up outside the camp so we're just talking about the the tabernacle is just a movable um camp that you know where they were able to um you know get you know be able to just get up and go at any time um so here i'm going to go back to um um, where, um, I'm sorry. And Moses said unto the Lord, see, thou says unto me, bring up this people that thou hast not, um, not let me know whom thou will send with me. So Moses was wondering who's, who are you going to send with me when I, um, take these people up, um, to where you told me that to taking them up to the land. So he wanted to know who was going to, um, go with him. He said, um, y'all, yet thou hast said that I know thee by name. When he talks about, I know thee by name, that's speaking of relationship. That's the relationship that Moses had with God. Um, when he talks about knowing him by name and this, I have a question. Um, uh, how many of us does God knows all our names? But when I talk about, um, knows my name, I'm talking about relationship. What kind of relationship do we have with God that we can say that God knows my name? So here's just talking to speaking of the relationship that Moses had with God. He says, now, therefore, I pray thee, um, if I have not found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. And Moses is asking him, if I have not, um, if, if um, I found grace in thy, thy sight, show me now thy way. He wants him to show him the way. And I'm going to read um, a little bit here. Um, Moses knew the Lord had called him to lead, lead his people had promised his presence and direction and had made the people his own because of the but because of the idolatrous rebellion described in chapter 32 however it seems Moses needed assurance that God's plan for his people was still was still in effect although the Lord had given assurance that he would give the promised land to Israel Moses was concerned because he had um indicated that he would not be in their midst so of course that concerned Moses and Moses' um, initial request centered on two actual, um, on who would actually would be going with him. And that's when he asked in verse 13. Verse 14, and he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Um, well, I'm going to go back a little bit. God, Moses had um, Moses had appealed to God on the basis of their relationship. Remember, I talked about the relationship that Moses had with God. So he appealed to God on the basis of his the relationship that, that he had. He wanted the Lord um, alone to show him his way. He did not want God to put on a um, like supernatural display of his power so that he could be amazed, impressed, or entertained. Moses simply wanted to know God and to be in his presence. Additionally, he reminded God that Israel was his people too. Moses did not want to follow anyone but God. He wanted God to be patient with the Israelites and not to abandon them. So that's a good leader, a leader who cares about the people, not only himself, but he cares about the people. And Moses proved time and time again that he cared about the people, just like God shows us time and time again that he loves us and that he cared for that he cares for us. 
And um, in verse 14, God answers, answered Moses um, with an extremely gracious response, which is awesome. You know, he answered him with a gracious response. And he, um, he, he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Um, the prayer life of Moses makes it an inter interesting study. He is often seen in prayer interceding for the Israelites. His prayers were not in vain either. As a result of Moses' prayers, God relented from destroying Israel and abandoning, and abandoning them. So, because of Moses' prayer, that's why it's important to be consistent and persistent in prayer. Because um, God knows the heart of his people. And if we're persistent in prayer, God will answer our prayers. If, as long as it's according to his will, he will answer our prayers. So Moses was persistent in always praying for the Israelites, no matter how they rebelled, no matter how they turned, no matter how they, they acted up. Moses still loved them enough to say, God, please, you know, can you, you know, help, help your people? And he always reminded God of who his people are. And just like um, as us being God's people, um, uh, God, when I would not say God knows all, everything, but I would just say this, that God is reminded when, um, you know, when you see the, the, um, the nail, the holes in the hands of Jesus, it reminds God of, um, what Jesus did for us and how Jesus loves us and he died for us. And so that helps us to not be totally annihilated, but we know that sin has to be dealt with just like it had to be dealt with, with the Israelites. And like I said before, God is not um, going to keep continuing to let sin continue on. God is going to deal with it. Now, he'll um, get us out of a mess, but he's still going to deal with that sin. You know, God is going to save us out of a lot of things, but he's still going to deal with that sin. Like, there's always consequences. No matter what you do in life, good or bad, there's consequences. There are good consequences and bad consequences. So we have to make the choice of what kind of consequences we want to end up with, whether it be good or bad. So let me continue with the lesson. Um... Now I'm going to go to verse to the second outline, which is God's presence. Verse 15 through 17. And he said unto him, if thou, if thy presence go not with me, carry not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? And it is not that thou goest with us. So shall we be separated and I and I and thy people from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I would do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. There we go. I know thee by name. Relationship. Um, I know thee by name. Does God know you by name? What kind of relationship do you have with God? We have to be reminded that um, God knows us by name. And what kind of relationship do we have with God? Uh, is it an obedient relationship? Is it a rebellious, you know, are we rebellious? But well, we have to be reminded that, like I said before, God is not going to continue to let us rebel. He is going to um, put forth judgment to those who continue to sin. But God is a loving God. And we pray and we ask God to forgive us, and he does. But he's still going to deal, deal with the sin. So verse 15 um, through 17, Moses responded by stating that if God did not go with them, he did not want to leave at all. And that's how we should be. Um, if God is not with us, we shouldn't want to, we shouldn't want to be there. We shouldn't go places that we know God is not going to be. If God is not going to go with us, this is not the, the same instance that, that, you know, um, that if God don't go, we don't, I don't want to go. No, I'm just saying that we shouldn't live lives where we would be someplace that God would not be. But in this case, Moses responded, um, saying that if you don't go with, if you're not going with us, we're not going, we don't, I don't want to go. So um, the promised land meant nothing to Moses if God was not there. It, it meant nothing to him. If God is not there, God, if you're not going to be there with me, I don't want to be there. Um, Moses, he saw no benefit to gaining the entire world if it meant he could not be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It, it means nothing. If we don't have a relationship with God, if we don't have God, it profit us nothing. Moses asked God how how the pe how would uh, I'm sorry. Moses asked God how people would know that he had found favor with God if if he was not with him. He said, "So God, how would I know if how would the people know that I find favor with you if you're not with me?" And that's what he was that's what he was asking God. And Moses um Moses Moses would be um just another man if 
God was, you know, that's what Moses said. I'll be just another man if you're not with me. You know, we're, we're Christians, we're saved, we're believers. And we have the difference in us and the world is that we have God, that we are saved, we have Christ. And that's the difference. And that's what Moses was saying. How would they know that I find favor if you're not, if you're not with me? It's the same thing with God. Um, we find favor with God because we know that God is with us. Um, what made Israel distinct from the rest of the world was not prom was not the promised land, the tabernacle, or even the law. They were made distinct because of the special presence of God among them. This is also true of Christians today. What makes us unique from the rest of the world is the presence of it is the presence of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. In this sense, the presence of God is not only with us but also in us. If we were not, if it were not for the Holy Spirit being in us, we would not be different from the rest of the world. We would not be. We are unique because of the abiding presence of the Spirit in each of us. And that's what, you know, with God being with us, that's what makes us different. That's what makes us unique. Um, God promises to show Moses his glory. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also. Thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And that's awesome. Um, how many of us have found grace in God's sight? And how many of us does he know by name? What is the relationship that we have with God? God assured Moses that he would grant his request. His positive response was based on two things. First, Moses found grace in God's, um, God's sight. And it is important to understand that the divine blessings... Moses enjoyed were not based on Mo Moses' natural ability or moral status. After all, Moses at one time was a fugitive from Egypt who was guilty of killing um, another man. He was guilty of killing. But Moses' unique commission and relationship with God is based solely on God's grace. Solely on God's grace. It's only by the grace of God that we're saved. And this is also why God answered his prayer because of God's grace. The second reason God granted Moses' request was that he knew Moses by name. This indicates that as God this indicates that as God chosen one, Moses had a very close relationship with the Lord. God had called him and Moses had responded. Moses could come to God with any request and know that God would hear him. It is important that when we pray, we follow Moses' model. It is not good to pray for selfish ambitions. The purpose of Moses' prayer was to grow closer to God and experience his presence. Not to become wealthy or famous. As God's children, though, through Jesus Christ, we also can bring our prayers before the Lord, um, before the Lord and know that he hears us. But we must make sure our requests are according to God's will. Now, after being assured that God would go with both him and Israel, Moses asked God to show him his glory. Moses had seen God's glory partially in the cloud that appeared over Mount Sinai and had entered that cloud. But even others had seen a form of God. Um, Moses asked for a personal appearance by God. He wanted a greater revelation of God and further assurance that God was going to be with him when he led Israel away from Mount Sinai. And it's really funny how I'm listening to this lesson and how a lot of times I'm, I pray to God and I'm like, God, um, show me you, show me you. But then I'm like, I don't know, God, because I'm kind of afraid if you show, really, if, if, if you show me, I'm afraid of what I'll see, you know, because I know God is holy. And I want that, but I'm afraid of it because of, of God is holy. But, you know, um, but like Moses wanted a great, greater revelation, a greater um, revelation of God and further assurance that God was going to be with him um, when he led Israel to Mount Sinai. So now I'm going to go to um, our last outline, which is God's glory. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all the goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy to whom I will show on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou can cannot see my face, for for no man shall see no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me that thou shalt stand upon a rock. 
And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of, of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take my I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And that's just the love of God, because if God tells us that no man can see my face and live, and then God protects Moses. That just goes to show the relationship and the love he had for Moses to say, okay, I'm going to show you me, but I'm not going to show you my face, but I am going to show you me. That That's an awesome God and a loving God that, that, he, would, that he would do that. Um, the, glory, the glory of God to pass by Moses, um, verse 19 and 20. Moses Moses request of God was twofold and he asked to see God's he asked to see God he asked to see God's way um his glory God responded I'm sorry God responded by agreeing to show him both um in some visible way the Lord would pass by Moses revealing his goodness proclaiming his name and his character and expressing grace and mercy the unique revelation would assure Moses of God's presence with him at at all times going forward. There would be many challenges in the in um days and years ahead, but God assured Moses that he would always be with him. Just like God assures us that he would always be with us no matter what we're going through, no matter how bad or how tough it get, God always assures us that he is with us. He says, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." And God is um God stands true to his word. God is uh, a man of his word. God is of good, of great character. And God um, lets us know that he is always with us. God said he would be gracious and merciful to those whom he choose. Anytime God is gracious and merciful, it is because he has chosen um, to do so. God cannot be coerced. We cannot coerce God into answering our prayer. We cannot coerce God into giving us anything. We cannot coerce God into um, being manipulated. We cannot do any of that. God does it because he loves us and he is true to his word. He chooses to be gracious and merciful to anyone. To anyone is remarkable. He certainly is not in, indebted to anyone. God doesn't uh, doesn't owe us anything. He's not indebted to anyone. So it's when he is because of his grace and his mercy that he does what he does for us. The one the one limitation placed on Moses was that was that he could not see God's face. This was because no one could look upon God and live. It simply was not possible for Moses to see God in his fullness, in the fullness of his glory and live. Moses still it was Moses is still a human being marred by sin. Therefore, he was not fit to see God's face and live to tell about it. Wow. The glory of the Lord to pass by Moses. Not only did God agree to show his glory to Moses, but he also chose um, a place for this to occur. God will place Moses on a rock. At an undisclosed location on Mount Sinai, when God's glory passed by that spot, God would put Moses in a cleft in the rock and hide him with his hand. What an awesome God! What a mighty God we serve! And he he would um the hand that would guide and protect Moses on his journey to the promised land would be the same hand that would hide and protect him in the rock. Oh, look at God. This would further demonstrate to Moses that he could always trust God to take care of him. God then told Moses that when he passed by the, that place, that he would remove his hand and allow Moses to see his back. The physical features um, ascribed to God are simply figurative. Um, figurative means um, of conveying that God would ensure that Moses saw only um partial revelation of the glory of God and he would graciously show Moses all that he was able to endure we cannot it, we only can endure as much as as because of course we're sinners and we can't we I mean we cannot look on God's holiness and 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 live it, God is just too brilliant and and wow he is just too brilliant his brilliance is just it just overshadows us um but um, with this lesson, I just want to say what an awesome leader, a leader who prayed to God, a leader who loves his people, you know, the people that God um, chose for him to lead. And let me say this. We have an awesome, a awesome leader in our pastor, a pastor who demonstrates his love for for 
God's people and for the people that um, God has called him to pastor. He shows forth the same love. He shows forth the same um, desire to see God's people prosper. And I pray that God continues to bless him in his ministry moving forward. And um, pastor is always a pastor that prays for us. And he continues to, um, to just be there for us, just like Moses was for the children. And um, Moses was an awesome leader. But again, I say it was a relationship. What kind of relationship do we have with God? Um, we and, and one thing that we must know that God promises to always be with us no matter where we are, no matter what we go through in life. Just pray. Talk to God. God is always there with you. God will always give you comfort. And um, so I pray that this lesson helps someone that we all understand that, that God is gracious and he is merciful. We don't deserve it. But with his love, his grace, and his mercy, he gives us what we do not deserve. Um, and because he is a loving God, we can continue to trust him. We can, can trust, we can continue to pray to him and know that God will be with us everywhere we go. He will be with us. He, he is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us to help lead and guide us to live the life that God would have us to live. So God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer.